good old water. Dihydrogen monoxide, the molecules in this bottle make life on Earth possible. All right, so fresh water here on Earth moves through a giant cycle, right? Well, this week as we raft and kayak down this river, we're gonna take a tour of the water cycle. The water cycle. It's an endless process that cycles water from the air to the ground and back again. And as an onlooker, moving water is seen precipitating, condensing, evaporating, and transpiring. And every step of the process works because the others precede it. So let's begin our journey. Let's start with water vapor. That means water that's in the air. There's a simple way to prove that water is in the air by taking a bottle of ice water. Pretty soon, water will start to form on the outside of that bottle. See that water there? That's from the air. In addition to condensing on a cold glass, water vapor can also condense to form clouds, like the ones we can film through time lapses. Water molecules join together into droplets, which eventually become so heavy they fall as rain or snow. The rain and snow melt either sinks into the ground or flows on the surface until it reaches a stream. And eventually the streams join into a river. The rain and snow melt collects in lakes and ponds and flows through coastal estuaries into the ocean. But water also infiltrates the ground, where it's called groundwater. It flows as underground streams and underground lakes called aquifers. At this stage, it's called groundwater. Sometimes the underground rivers can be seen in caves that we can dive in, or come to the surface as springs, providing clear water for aquatic wildlife. Now let's get back to this river run. Where we've got to face the torrent of liquid water that flows through these canyons. How does the water that's found in places like this river get into the air to form clouds and rain? Well, it's called evaporation. Which is actually kind of like the opposite of condensation. You see, water evaporates from the soil and from every body of water, including the surface of this river. But water doesn't only evaporate from large bodies of water, like the ocean. It also evaporates from things like this water bottle. Okay, so one thing we know is that about 90% of atmospheric moisture comes from evaporation. So what about the other 10%? Well, it comes from plants, like that big tree over there. You see, plants are responsible for about 10% of the water in the atmosphere through a process called transpiration. And plants release water and oxygen as waste products through pores in their leaves and stems, called stomata. You might not think that each plant can lose that much water. Well, on a hot, dry day, a full-grown tree can lose over 400 liters of water a day. As water vapor builds, it starts to form clouds again, and the water goes through another cycle. And this happens over and over again. So here's a quick review. As water in the atmosphere condenses, it forms clouds, usually resulting in some form of precipitation, like rain. This rain creates runoff, which flows along the ground or sinks into the ground, creating groundwater. Water gets back into the atmosphere through evaporation of liquid water or the transpiration of plants. This starts the process all over again in an endless cycle. So until next time, never stop exploring your world. Here's something for you to try at home. You can see evidence of transpiration in action. Just place a plastic bag over a plant and tape the bottom of the bag closed. Within a few hours, you should start seeing water droplets on the inside of the bag. If you measure the mass of the dry bag and subtract it from the mass of the wet bag, you can actually calculate how much water the plant transpired in that period of time.
Check out more about what we're doing with them at this link right here. Okay, stay tuned for more to come.